The Life and Sad Ending of David Lee Roth David Lee Roth was born on October 10, 1954, in Inglewood, California, in the United States. Roth started life as the son of an ophthalmologist. Some of his early musical favorites were jazz artists Al Jolson and R&B legend Ray Charles. During the summers, Roth would often visit his uncle Manny in New York City. His uncle ran the club Café Wa in the Greenwich Village neighborhood, a popular hotspot for such famous talents as Bob Dylan. Roth moved to California with his family as a teenager. He began performing in high school by joining a band. As a student at Pasadena City College, Roth studied music theory for a time. There, he befriended Eddie and Alex Van Halen, two brothers from the Netherlands who played together in a band called Mammoth. Roth played with several bands himself, including Red Bull Jets. The Van Halen sometimes rented Roth's PA system for their gigs. Roth later joined Mammoth, which soon changed its name to Van Halen after learning another group had already had their rights to Mammoth. Michael Anthony came on board as the group's bassist. Van Halen quickly became a hit, featuring Roth's expressive, sometimes primal vocals and Eddie Van Halen's revolutionary guitar work. The album contained numerous now-classic hard rock songs such as Runnin' With The Devil and Jamie's Cryin'. Roth wrote much of the lyrics for the group, which has been credited for changing the face of hard rock with their pop and punk influence sound. In 1979, Van Halen had their first hit single, Dance the Night Away. The band toured to support the record, and Roth proved to be quite the showman. With his long blonde hair and crazy spandex outfits, he won over audiences with his fast-talking patter jumps and stunts. Roth made several more hit albums with Van Halen, including 1984, which proved to be Roth's most successful recording with the group, scoring their first number one single, Jump. He also co-directed several of the band's videos, including the one for Hot for the Teacher. Roth released a four-song recording, Crazy from the Heat, in 1985. On the EP, he did his own take of several famous tunes ranging from California surf rock to old pop standards. Roth scored a number three hit with California Girls written by the Beach Boys. His homage to Louis Prima, I'm Just a Gigolo, I Ain't Got Nothing, also did well. But these songs were marked departure from Van Halen's rock sound. With 1986, Edom and Smile, Roth returned to a more familiar territory with his full-length release. This hard-driving song, Yankee Rose, proved to be the album's most successful single. Going Crazy was also enjoyed to some popularity. Roth began to really experiment with his sound in 1988's Skyscraper, sounding more mainstream pop and less hard rock. While the album had strong sales, Roth's musical shift was not welcomed by many. Roth further alienated some of his fans with Nile Rodgers' produced Your Filthy Little Mouth in 1994, which proved to be a commercial dud. This was the first real flop for him, and he soon tried another direction. Roth debuted a lounge act in Las Vegas the following year, which failed to draw much of an audience. In 1996, Roth and a brief reunion with Van Halen. He worked with them on some new tracks for the Greatest Hits album and appeared with them at MTV Music Video Awards. That same year, Sammy Hagar left the band. Trying a different medium, Roth gave readers an inside look at his wild and crazy life in his autobiography, Crazy from the Heat, in 1997. He tried to recapture some of his past glory by teaming up with his former nemesis, Hagar, for a successful tour in 2002. In 2005, Roth had a brief career as a radio DJ. He was hired to fill the shoes of Howard Stern as the popular shock jock had moved to the satellite. Both Roth's days in radio broadcasting were short-lived. He only lasted a few months before he was let go for low ratings. He made much musical headlines in 2007 as Van Halen inducted themselves into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Roth refused to attend the ceremony after learning that he wasn't going to be able to perform. Later that year, Roth buried the hatchet with Van Halen. 
He rejoined the group and now included Van Halen's son, Wolfgang, on bass for a hugely successful tour. He and the rest of the band also went back into the studio recording 2012's A Different Kind of Truth. The album hit the top of the rock charts, with critics offering mixed assessments of the work. Some noted that Roth's voice is less dynamic than it once was. Still, others heralded the return of Roth, calling him a true hero of recording. Roth and the rest of Van Halen went on tour in 2012, but ended up postponing some of the dates scheduled for the summer and fall. Sources close to the band, according to Billboard, said the band members were tired, not bickering. In personal life, Roth had four major relationships, but never thought of getting married. Recently, David mentioned that a recent surgery he had on his lower back, spinal fusion surgery, and said that he will be at risk whenever he is outside. In this way, David showed he is self-isolating himself for over five months. Probably right now is his worst time when his health is slowly deteriorating. Thank you for listening to the story about the life of David Lee Roth. Like and comment on your opinion in the comment section below.